Hello everyone, this is Riccardo Masini and this is Vlog. And this is Flashpoint. South China Sea. The latest game by Harry Buchanan that you will all remember for his many actions and discussions about wargaming in general for his many initiatives. Uh, San Diego Historicon and Conflicts of Interest. So he is a very, very important character in the wargaming, in the global wargaming community, uh, also a good friend, uh, and I always advise you to hear his podcast, Herald of War Games, and now he's also, no, not now, he has always been a game designer, because he designed the coin title that I really, I have to say, I love many coin titles, but one is special for me, and it is Liberty or Death, and I really love Liberty or Death, uh, designed by Harold Buchanan, and now Harold has given us a new, I have to say, a new small gem, a small, little gem, this time it's much mm, easier, much less complicated than his previous games, such as Liberty or Death or, Liberty or, Death or Campaigns of 1777 for Strategy and Tactics, Flashpoint South China Sea, much easier, much simpler game, much smaller game, but still a very, very tense and deep and intense game. Really, really tense and intense. I like it. Uh, why? Because, well, there are many videos with the rules, so but they're very, 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 very simple, just very few rules. Um, so I'm not going too, too deep here. But this is a game that of course, it starts from a uh, uh, previous title like 13 Days, but also like other titles of the Lunchtime series by GMT, such as Fort Sumter, and in a certain way, certain way, also Red Flag over Paris, but most of all Fort Sumter, uh, and 13 Days. But also there's a bit of 300 Heart of Water, because we have different campaigns with small reset in each campaign, but also some stuff coming from Europe divided. We have this open scoring system here. These are the scoring cards, you can activate them to a card and that card gives you uh, victory points and they are open for both players, which are USA and China and the People's Republic of China, uh, competing for influence over the South China Sea, the nations and the contested islands and so on. These are victory point sources that are open to both players, so each can build their road towards one of those scoring cards, uh, but the opponent will see your action, we see, for example, oh, why the American, I am the Chinese, why the American is increasing his influence over the Philippines, maybe he has a Philippine scoring card in hand, so I have two contain him here, but will it be true, will it be true that he has a scoring card for the Philippines, or will he, will he have a scoring card for Vietnam, etc, 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 and all of these in many different dimensions, many different levels to take into account, such as the tension track, the possibility of different events, um, the use of your resources, the political warfare, and so on and so on. Very, very interesting. Why am I, am I speaking about so many levels? Because that is why. Each card can be used for four different ways. For the event, to activate one of those scoring cards, for operation points, so all over the board, or for mode. Mode means that if, you, uh, if uh, your opponent has just discarded the card associated with your faction and you have an card with the same symbol, you can reactivate that from the discard pile uh, for the event or for the scoring, so each must be very careful about what he discards. Uh, and so on and so on, placing influence uh, to uh, create the condition to activate one of those scoring cards to get victory points, uh, but if you do stuff over the board, the tension will rise, so the cost of doing stuff will be higher. If it 
goes to critical, other stuff cannot be cannot be uh, ex other operations. Some, some operations can cannot be executed. So you have to lower the tension, or you have to keep it critical because you don't want your opponent to do those operations. Operations are you can place influence or you can lock with political warfare, which has a particular uh, random resolution if the political warfare action succeeds. Well, if it succeeds, you can lock a country and uh, boot out your uh, opponent from that country, maybe because you have that scoring card, for example. Uh, but this ra raises the tension track. Um, so, lots of stuff to do, and when you activate one of those scoring cards, victory point tracks goes here. Just like in 300 Fifth Water, it is a tug of war type uh, victory point track. Um, three campaigns, uh, that is three hands of cards, six cards for uh, each player. And when those six cards are played, the campaign is over and we can get to the next campaign. There is a bitter reset, but Chinese reclamation stands, Chinese reclamation that is the influence placed on those islands, on those contested islands, and uh, so one asymmetry. And uh, after the third campaign, after it is over the third campaign, you have one final round of scoring. So all the scoring cards are reactivated and they are executed. Um, so, very, very interesting. Oh, and in each campaign, when you score a card, you flip it. So, for example, in the, in the second campaign, okay, you scored Malaysia. No one can score for Malaysia once again. I, when in, we pass to the third campaign, Malaysia can be scored once again. So, as we see, lots of stuff happening. The board changes constantly. Lots of dimensions, but very, very manageable. It is easy to manage all this stuff, all these different uh, levels on which you have to operate. And this creates a believable model, a plausible model for the indirect confrontation between America and China over the South China Sea and the influence over all the countries and the contested islands there, uh, both on the diplomatic and the economic uh, uh, level. Uh, very, very plausible. Uh, very easy to manage, I'd say 45 minutes, one hour maximum per play. Uh, also, it can be played solo, and I, I tell you, I hate bots uh, in general, I hate solo mode with different algorithms. This is a simple priority action mode with solitaire, you have all the different actions that uh, uh, the bot will try to execute, and then inside, when the bot must uh, uh, do something, you have one of these cards, and for example, the bot, okay, it tries to uh, put stuff as a Chinese, let's imagine a Chinese bot in the contested island CR, silent reclamation, with a solo card I drew at the beginning of the turn, will first place in Spratly, then in Scarborough, then in Paracel, and uh, these cards change turn after turn, so uh, very, very easy to manage, very nice, very really, uh, simple. I like it. I really, really like it. The final effect is a very fast but engaging game with lots of different stuff happening, with lots of different levels to keep track of. This is one of those games that I like to call non-linear. Why? Because the single mechanics are very, very linear. Play, I place one cube of influence here or I remove another one. But with all different dimensions, with all this versatility inside each card, because each card can be used in four different modes, but also each card of your opponent, that is four by four by four or four by four, this multiplies, this multiplies the variables, this creates a non-linear experience, because there are so many variables possible on so many different levels, this is not just combination, like in chess, it is one, one dimension, a single dimension, the chessboard. No, 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 we have the tension, we have the economic level, we have the diplomatic level, we have the, the single events, uh, the, the, the mode, the, 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 the scoring cards, the campaigns, the, the reset the board, and uh, political warfare that can or cannot happen, can succeed or cannot succeed. Lots, lots of stuff of different levels where you operate, 
to build your own victory conditions and to exploit those conditions. But another thing very important, timing. I spend, okay, I use one card to increase my influence in the Philippines. Okay, but before I have to score Chinese and American, the Chinese player has another card and that and he can lock the Philippines, for example, as we, we said before. And uh, so timing is of the essence. I have to choose the exact right time when to build up my own victory point source because there are always some delays in which the opponent can do something to block me. Could a Chinese player could lock the Philippines and prevent me from scoring that. So Philippines are blocked by the Chinese. I lost all my diplomatic influence there. And so I cannot score my own card that activates the scoring in the Philippines. Now it's suddenly useless. Maybe it would have been better if I just scored the Philippines when I cooled because, okay, I get one victory point, but this is for sure, and so on, and so on. But will the opponent understand my bluff? And when I am going to score Philippines, maybe he has another card that lets him score much more on another level. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, scoring cards, some are conditions on just one uh, one nation with these islands, others are global, uh, uh, the, 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 the contested islands or the economics all over the board. So. As you see, very, very interesting, very engaging, in a very fascinating setting, a very important setting, because this is the geopolitical, I don't need to tell you, this is the geopolitical confrontation direct, but very, uh, very intense confrontation between China and America that will define the next decades of our global history, of world history. So, uh, I really, I don't, don't know, between this and Ukraine, I think that those are the two main crisis points uh, in, uh, in the world today, as we are speaking. And also, we have a playbook that tells you interesting stuff about those events. Each card uh, lets you understand a bit of an, an event that maybe you didn't know, because maybe no one speaks too much about this stuff, but uh, all of a sudden, you understand, you realize, you are interested in these dynamics, as I said, in a very, very believable model, uh, simulation model. And so, uh, also, game components are very good, very good rulebook. I love the fact that there is a, uh, an independent solitary rulebook, because, wow, finally, I don't need, you don't have uh, 10 pages of rule or multiple rules, and then Two pages of solitary rules at the NSA. Okay, on paragraph non dot five, you change this phrase because and it is very confusing. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, you can buy this game and play it absolutely and totally just for the solitaire, just for the solitaire. And uh, if you want, even never, never open the multiplayer rulebook because this is totally independent. You can just read that and play it solo. Nice and easy, but I can show it to you because this is, can be downloaded from the GNT website. Very good drill book. I didn't, didn't have any doubt. Okay, the game is easy, but is very different from traditional war games. This is a war game, <laughs> and uh, really uh, uh, very good layout, highly readable, very easy to follow. Oh, and it's a nice surprise. You have. See our quotes to hear from some music when the attention is low, when the attention is medium, when the attention is high. Not when the attention is critical, because when the attention is critical, maybe you don't have, you just don't have to listen to music but do something about stuff. Okay. Oh, and also, but much, much even more important, the link to the Discord server for the Flashpoint series. Very nice little touch. Some issues that I had. Well. Uh, you have to understand what type of game this is. So if you are looking for a direct confrontation, immediate confrontation, maybe even military confrontation, this is not the game for you. Okay? This is a direct uh, confrontation and you are really working on stuff in, in, in very indirect ways. Okay? It is also a bit uh, 
random, yes, I'd say because there are lots of cards, etc. But it's very balanced, very well calibrated, so you will never have a horrible hand and never hand of cards, nor an ideal hand of cards. There will also be highs and lows. Maybe sometimes some hand of cards uh, and some cards it will have um, better, other times they are worse, but in the long run they uh, they tend to balance uh, balance out. Also, yes, political warfare maybe is the most random thing because you spend okay, I spend uh, two actions to have a level two political warfare then I to see if, you, if as a Chinese I can lock out the Philippines. I do the card. Okay, two is good. Okay, I can uh, I can put a lock here, and this is what happens. Okay, but if this card was a three, so it was more than the two I had invested, uh, the political warfare did not succeed. Okay. Oh, and tension goes high. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway. This is a randomness, yes, but you are, this is just like Mark Hammond said. This is the, a randomness that you are building because you spend two points. You can also do this stuff with, by spending just one point, but in that case, that political action, would, uh, warfare action, would never not succeeded. And this is also an interesting touch because at the bottom, this so these cards actually theoretically can be recycled. Uh, that you use it to resolve that uh, that action uh, very 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 interesting stuff uh, anyway also mm, it is very short okay just three hands of cards so it can be a bit short term there is planning but no real long term planning that is good because the situation is so frantic that really you just don't have the time the space to do planning in tens of decades time you just have to plan uh, each action one after uh, after the other. Uh, also, if you do one mistake, you can recover. Yes, but if you do a good series of mistakes, even at the beginning of the game, it may be quite difficult to recover. It is always possible, but just be careful because you don't have many actions. So choose and execute your actions wisely. Anyway, this is such a short and nice game that has a very strong cherry effect, so it is absolutely possible. And you will want to do that to uh, do one play and then do immediately another one, another play. Okay, um, there was, oh yeah, some reviewers found, uh, I'm not showing it here to you, but found some small issues, some small things lacking from the solitaire play aid. Yes, that is true. Uh, these um, small descriptions of an action could have been written that it would have been better, but after some plays, you will remember them. So, yes, it is an issue, but it's not so uh, serious. In, in general, the interface, the uh, ergonomics of the game, they are very, very nice. They are very, very good. Uh, also, last. Uh, last thing you sh you have to uh, be interested into this uh, setting. If you're not interested in indirect geopolitical confrontation, political economic confrontation, if you just want a war game, once again, this is not a game for you. From my point of view, in my opinion, you should be interested in this stuff because once again, this will uh, have influence, a massive influence over our collective lives in the next decades and this game will create this interest for you because in myself i was interested in this stuff okay i read things okay but this game helped me feel even more inside it in even if you have a passing interest in this this game will convince you to uh, research a bit more in this uh, on, the, on this subject, in, on this subject, but I mean, really, really, really uh, good. This because there is a good rendition of the setting of the event. Okay, conclusions. Yes, there are very clear and evident uh, derivations 
uh, for this game, 13 days, 300 and water, a bit of Europe divided, while it's struggle, okay. But there are those, there have been evolutions, and this is a, a totally autonomous, totally independent game that I really, really love and I really recommend. I love the scoring, the open scoring uh, thing, because there's not just, okay, Twilight Struggle, I have to say that to you. The one thing I don't like over Twilight Struggle, there are two things. There are uh, very fixed openings and the fact that the scoring card is random. I, I, it's semi-random. I know that a scoring card will appear in a certain moment and that scoring card will, I have, if I have it in my card, okay, I know that my opponent doesn't know that, and I don't know if I, he has that scoring card, a bit too random, mister. No, these are open to both players, so both players are competing to have access to these sources of victory points, and each player has to build this road to reach that victory condition. And I really love it, I love this stuff really gives character to this, uh, to this game and really let, let, makes you feel like a decision maker creating the right, the right conditions to get uh, victory, to get uh, success, to get predominance. And also an interesting thing is that five out of seven of these scoring cards are of single nations, but two are global, economic all over the world and control of the contested islands. Uh, Another balance of symmetry, very, very uh, interesting, very well represented. Solitaire, Solitaire is good. I hate bots, but I love this priority system and also Kada system game, uh, system for, uh, for this game. And it is very easy to manage, very nice, uh, very involved. You, 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 don't, you don't need to play another game just to, uh, to playing two, simultaneously two different games, one for you, one for the bot. No, 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 it is very easy and it's very, very well balanced uh, and also you can adjust the difficulty level with the, with the handicap over the, 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 the starting with three points. So, mm, very well made. Uh, so, I think this is by... No, sorry. Uh, oh, in the time, uh, I said Joel Toppen. No, it is by Jason Carr. Sorry. Sorry, Jason. I will correct that in the Italian video. Uh, absolutely. Um, Jason Ka, great stuff, great solitaire, uh, great, uh, uh, great solitaire uh, rules. Uh, so, <sighs> very good game, very easy, very simple, very believable model, very dense game, very deep game with a deep strategy game. And I just tell you that I see it here and I just want to play the situation once again. Uh, so, very, very good game, and I'm really, really eager to see what will happen with the rest of the Flashpoint series. We had to wait a bit more than what was anticipated for this game, but it was very well worth the wait. Thank you, Harold. Thanks to everyone who worked on this, because this is a good, very, a very good game, very, very interesting game. Uh, Totally and absolutely recommended. So, uh, as always, this episode ends here. I wish so you have fun and see you next time. And as always, remember, don't be scared. It's just war games. Ciao.